Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why we see stalls in our weight loss. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, guys, this is really kind of a complex thing um, because realistically, we know based upon all the scientific literature, the data, the metabolic ward studies, uh, that losses in tissue weight, and you know, we're talking about fat, muscle, all of these things, loss of lean mass, fat mass, everything is pretty much a product of calories in versus calories out. Uh, and it should, in theory, be simple, but when we're dealing with a very, very dynamic, complex system like a human being, uh, it's not always the case. And not only that, we also have to deal with psychology, hormones, everything else. All these things can, that can affect our appetite, our energy, uh, water weight, all these different things that can fluctuate and, and be a problem for us, make it a lot more complicated uh, than we would like it to be. And the reality is, you know, there's a lot of times when we are being very consistent in our diet, we think we're being consistent in our diet, we might have lost 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 25 pounds, whatever it is, and we're still doing pretty much the same things, and then we see no change in scale weight and it might be two or three weeks sometimes four weeks maybe and the scale is staying the same or in some cases it might even go up a pound and then you start to wonder what in the world is it i'm doing wrong uh, and sometimes what happens is that we panic and we'll start doing drastic things to try to make that scale start going down right we'll start doing drastic things to make that scale go down because we get worried about it we get stressed about it um, and it's like, you know, we're, we're standing there at whatever weight loss we've been at and it just stops. And so the things that we need to look at with that is, is asking what's really going on. The big one, of course, is making sure that you're still in a caloric deficit. And I don't care what diet you're using to, to reach that deficit. You will be losing tissue weight if you're in a caloric deficit. Now, whether that's good weight or bad weight it has a lot to do with the composition of your diet, your activity, everything else. So when we talk about that with energy in, energy out, uh, that doesn't mean all calories are equal in terms of things like muscle retention, stuff like that, uh, or even energy. You know, if you're eating <clears throat> foods that give you low energy and junk food and have nutritional deficiencies that make you feel sluggish and crappy, your energy out might go down. Uh, you know, if you're not eating enough protein or, or you're, again, have a dietary deficiency that might be impacting performance, you're going to lose more muscle tissue. You know, so there's a lot going on there. So I don't want people to think that when I say calories in, calories out, uh, is what determines tissue weight loss. That doesn't mean all foods are created equal in regards to that. Uh, and I, nothing could, because nothing could be further from the truth. But one of the things you have to make sure of is making sure that you're actually in a caloric deficit because this is one of the things that has been studied and looked at uh, like in the metabolic world where they monitor people. And a lot of times when people are in a very large caloric deficit, we tend to binge eat, and this has been noted to be stronger in women than in men. Now, men still do it, obviously, but I'm just saying that what's been observed is that women are slightly more prone to doing this than men. Um, and, and it makes sense biologically because women uh, have a biological imperative to have more body fat than men do, and it's necessary for their reproductive system uh, and for their reproductive system health. And so they're, they're hardwired a little bit different in regards to uh, starvation and, and letting their food intake go too low. Uh, women are, are more resistant to that than, than men at a psychological and hormonal level for survival reasons. So people will tend to binge eat and forget that they did it. Um, and so that's one of the biggest problems you have when you go into too large of a caloric deficit is that your mind will start playing tricks on you to keep you from starving, right? It will start doing things that will mess with you uh, so that you overeat more than you think you did. And you might think that you're eating 1,400 calories and you're really eating 2,000 or 2,200. And, and I think one of the worst cases they saw is that uh, a woman thought she was eating 1,100 calories, but it actually turned out when she was monitored with the cameras 24-7, her food log read 1,100 and she was eating 3,300. So she was eating three times what she thought she was and she swore even after looking at it that she didn't think she was eating that much. Like she legitimately believed it in a metabolic ward um, because her calories were pushed down too low and your mind starts playing tricks on you. Um, and that's what people need to understand. There can be an actual delusion associated with it. And it doesn't mean that you're crazy. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It means that you are hardwired to survive and not starve yourself when there's food available. Um, again, that's just human nature. It's not actually a bad thing. So it doesn't make you crazy or anything else if you run into this situation, but just be aware that that can happen. 
So you may not actually be in the caloric deficit that you think you are, particularly when we start dealing with harder to measure, really calorically dense foods. It's very easy to squeeze in that extra 500 calories. So when that happens, particularly when you've been in a deficit, if you go up to maintenance, you might actually gain a pound, right? Even though you, you're not actually overeating, you regain a little bit of the water weight you lost, maybe a little bit of the intermuscular glucose, which will attract more water, and you end up gaining a pound or two uh, just from that extra 500 calories that you're eating a day now, um, just in terms of water weight, right? And that can happen when you're up at maintenance sometimes. Uh, so just something to be aware of that you might not actually be in a caloric deficit if you stall because what can happen is that, again, your body will put you in a, a survival situation. You'll tend to want to overeat a little bit more. Uh, you might start moving less. And it's usually not because your metabolism has, has slowed. I covered that in the last video earlier today that that really isn't uh, all that it's made out to be. But it could be the case of you you have been in a 500 calorie deficit every day you've been losing a pound a week consistently then all of a sudden you're you're moving around less you're fidgeting less because that's one of your body's survival mechanisms and so what happens is that you might be burning 200 less calories a day than you were before due to just less activity feeling more sluggish and then you're eating 300 more because maybe you're dipping a little deeper into the peanut butter you know the natural peanut butter or, or whatever it is that you're eating you're being a little heavy-handed with the the measuring and you're really not in a deficit anymore or you're in such a small deficit that you've regained a little bit of the muscle glucose right because instead of a 500 calorie deficit you're in a 100 calorie deficit and you're still losing fat at that point especially if you're training but it's going to be so too slow to register on the scale so that's one thing that we have to contend with then we deal with the other one it's all about water weight uh, what ends up happening is that as physical activity goes up what happens our body produces more cortisol the more intense your workout, the more cortisol you produce, and usually even muscle gaining workouts, the higher the cortisol level, usually the more muscle you gain according to all the meta-analysis, right? Well, cardio will do the same thing. It elevates cortisol. It's a stress hormone. You need it for survival. It's not a bad thing. Um, what also happens as we lower carbohydrate intake, cortisol goes up. So what actually happens is that carbohydrates themselves blunt and can reduce total circulating cortisol. So normally we think of when carbohydrates go low, we think of water weight loss, right? We initially lose water weight because we lose muscle glycogen, which attracts water. Uh, and it's something like every gram of glycogen attracts four grams of water. So we burn off some of that muscle glycogen, we, we drop water weight. Um, that's normal when lower carb diets happen. But what also happens over time is that if your carbs are a little low, and if you're in a, a large caloric deficit, your carbohydrates are going to be relatively low relative to your energy output, right? Because you're, you're burning more calories than you're using. Uh, our body tends to prefer carbs as its primary fuel source. It prefers that. So if you're able to lose body fat, if you're losing a, a pound of fat or more a week, uh, odds are your carbohydrate intake is fairly low relative to your activity level, right? That's, that's gonna be normal because uh, that's our preferred fuel source. And so therefore, when it's, it's a little bit lower or we're out burning it, uh, we're going to start tapping further into our body weight. And I'm not, not to say that I'm advocating low-carb diets because I really don't, but the point has to be made there. So what ends up happening, though, is that cortisol gets elevated the, the more carbohydrates go down. And so what will happen sometimes if you're training hard and your carbohydrate intake isn't particularly high, it's low relative to your energy output, what will happen is that over time your cortisol levels will start to rise more and more. So your average circulating cortisol will go up. Well, cortisol causes water retention. It causes water retention. And so while your body is in that position, it, your body also wants to maintain homeostasis. And that elevated cortisol can be a way of your body of saying, hey, I don't want to lose weight this quickly. I want to hold on to what I have. The stress hormones go up. Water retention goes up. And your body tries to, to maintain its weight. But it's not maintaining it through holding on to body fat at that point. It's maintaining it because you start retaining more water. And so if you're still in a, a caloric deficit, say for three weeks straight, let's say you, you're on a 500 calorie a day deficit. Let's say you're burning uh, 2,800 calories a day and you're eating around 2,300. Well, you're probably losing a pound every one of those weeks of body fat. But let's say this goes on for three weeks and then what happens? If your cortisol is staying elevated, you know, you might be uh, at 180 pounds and still be sitting there for three weeks straight, right? 
And then what ends up happening is that eventually when your body gets used to it or something adjusts, what happens? Your body swooshes weight off. So a lot of times what people will do, they, they're scared that their metabolism is slowed. And so a lot of coaches will trick people this, well, you just need to increase your caloric intake to speed your metabolism back up. Well, that, that's total BS. That's BS. But what happens is that what happens when you add some calories in? Let's say you've been sitting here and your cortisol is elevated, right? And for three weeks, you've been in a 500 deficit, but you stayed at 180 pounds. Then all of a sudden you add in two or 300 more calories a day, right? And where are they probably coming from? Probably from extra carbs. So let's say you're, you add another 50 grams roughly of carbohydrates to your diet every day. Now, normally we would think of the, the extra carbs as causing water retention intermuscularly, but in this case, that's not enough to really boost your glucose much because you're still in a caloric deficit. So you're not really replenishing the muscle glycogen particularly well from that. But what happens is that all of a sudden, your body is getting a little more calories and it's getting more carbohydrates and the cortisol levels go ahead and they level off and they drop down a little bit. What happens? Then you start peeing off that extra water and then all of a sudden you lose three or four pounds overnight. Like you might be doing that for one day, two days, five days, you've been doing that. And then all of a sudden you, you drop from 180 all the way down to 176 or 177 because you finally lose all that extra water that was associated with it. But then people will perceive that as, oh yeah, my metabolism sped back up. No, you didn't. You just lowered your stress hormones by adding a little extra food back in to blunt your cortisol response. And then you, your body will go ahead and drop that extra water at that point. Uh, so that's something that you need to deal with also. You need to understand you were still losing fat the entire time. But until your body got normalized and, and had an appropriate adjustment to your hormone levels, it just made you retain water. And so therefore you have a stall in weight loss that actually wasn't a bad thing. You were continuing to lose body fat just fine. It's just that the scale weight wasn't reflecting it because your body was maintaining that homeostasis as a stress response uh, to hold on to the extra fluid and water. And then when it levels off, you all of a sudden pee half a gallon overnight and you're four pounds lighter. So that's one of the things that's going on also that people need to be aware of as well, if you're sure that you're still in a caloric deficit. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.